All right, I took the ones off the front. We don't need the front up right now, I don't think. All right, let's take a look underneath. I've got four jacks and a couple big tires, a couple of the Swamp Dragon tires. I always wait 10, 15 minutes. I shake the car a couple times, make sure that uh, nothing's gonna give. <laughs> and you just wanna be careful. This is the transmission here, and that's the engine up there. It's all gonna come out together, the, the exhaust and everything connected. It's gonna be kind of interesting. I'm on the outside of the car here. There's a mount here, an engine mount here, and there's an engine mount on the other side. I got everything supported, double stands, tires, more stands to hold the mount when it comes loose, and a stand for the transmission. Before we release those mounts, we want to disconnect the clutch cable. There we go. It's just a little wheel. There's a spacer here. How does this thing come out? All right, that just pops out. You see that? It just slides right out. There we go. Yep. I think this just pops out too. I don't remember. Yep. Pretty easy so far. This is the accelerator cable. I think it just pops out here. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get that gear shifter off. There's a boot. Yeah. Looks like an Allen wrench. There we go. Let's see if that'll do it. Mm, it's tight. Oh yeah. Interesting little pin there. Let's see if uh, if we move the shifter in here. Let's see if you can see it right here. I think it's just uh, it looks like it might be coming out. All right, cool. We're getting there. Let's uh, keep moving forward. I think that shift rod will come off once we lower the uh, engine down. All right. <laughs> Let's see what happens. There's a nut up here that is spinning. I'm gonna see if I can get a wrench on it or maybe a vice grip. Let's get this battery, this homemade battery tray out of here real quick. Some homemade battery tray they made for it back in the day. That's the hell hole. That's what they call it. The computer is just laying down there. Just laying down in there. Look how bad that hole is. Wow. Ooh, that's pretty bad. There's some wires here that go to this box. I need to disconnect them. Look at this. Wow. These are everywhere, guys. Everywhere. Hmm. Pretty wild. Those right here. Just like that. Okay, I put a vice grip on there. Yeah. All right. You can see right there where it's disconnected. And it's resting on this stand now. Look at that, it's all stripped out pretty bad. All right, let's try the other side. One down, three to go. This one's probably gonna spin too, so we're gonna have to get up there and put a vice grip on it. And Yeah. 
We're gonna have to reach up behind here somehow, get a box wrench on it. All right, I'm gonna pull the wheel off and that should give me a little more access here. These are 19 millimeter. And they're loose cause uh, when we put them on, when we rescued it, not real tight. There we go. Got it. And I got a ratchet and a 17 shorty socket up in there. And you can see the nut stuck in there. We'll add this to the tools used pile. The tools used pile is getting bigger. <laughs> Starting to get bigger. We still got some reserve over here we haven't used yet. All right, let's get the transmission mounts off. They are 19. They might spin at the top too, so. Yep. Yeah, they're spinning too. I got a 19 up there. If I can do it one handed here. Yep. Just saw it drop a little bit too. But it should rest on that jack right there. And the jack should catch that. I don't remember doing the accelerator cable. There should be an accelerator throttle cable somewhere. Where is it? This is it here. Let me loosen this real quick. Accelerator cable's loose. That was pretty easy. Just this loose, loosen this nut here. It comes off, pops off that bracket. And then loosen the little nut on this end of this and it pops right out. Hey, let's try to lower it and see what happens. All right, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. time yesterday and I had to get this star bit from my house I forgot you had to take the the axles off so I needed this bit let's see Ooh, they're on there boy all right I got the secret weapon let's see if it helps oh yeah right off So this bit is, um, it's an eight millimeter star bit. These should pop out now. All right, I'm gonna turn the wheel. That way we can get to the other four on here. I'm just turning the rotor here. So we get to all the sides. We're gonna take these brake calipers off and send them to my buddy Graham at Rebuilt Calipers of America. He does a nice job. I'll show you the ones he did for the 72 here in a second. They look amazing. But yeah, that should pop off. I might have to pry on that a little bit. Let's get this side off. Full of dirt. I'm gonna have to pick out the dirt, dirt and grease. All right, the grease and dirt get packed in there pretty good. So, in order to get the bit in there, you gotta get this stuff out of here. 
otherwise you'll the bit won't go all the way won't seat all the way and then you'll strip it out so let's get these cleaned out All right, the transmission should be free now. The axles should be free from the transmission. Although they're still kind of seated. Uh, I'm gonna lower it and shake it a little bit and hopefully those will break free, but we might need to get on it with a, we might need to pry on it a little bit. Um, what else is gonna be holding this thing? Probably, Aha! Right there, look at that. Ground wire. There's a ground wire holding it, so we need to get that off. So there's a ground wire from the transmission to the body. Let's see if we can get that off right there. Oh, sucker's on there, boy. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's got some weight on it. Take some of the tension off of that. And then it should pop off. There we go. All right. There may be something else attached, some wires or whatever, but let's see. Let's see where we're at. Still kind of holding on. Let's see if we can pop them off. All right. Well, these things are stuck. I don't know if any WD-40 will help, but maybe it'll get down in there. I got all the bolts off. I thought those things just, I'm pretty sure they pop off, but there's dowel pins, I think, that hold them, and they're just, they're probably just seized on there. Just trying to loosen them up a little bit. Okay, finally, those broke loose. Uh, yeah, it's just two dowel pins hold them in, but there was a lot of old grease and stuff just kind of seized on there. I tapped on this one on the outside pretty hard with a hammer and just kind of broke it free. And then on this one, I tapped on it with the screwdriver and it broke free. So the trick is gonna be getting the engine past those axles. It should be a little closer to being free. Let's see if we can pull it out a little bit more. Okay, the axles are free. Let's see if we can pull it out, see what happens. I think there's gonna be some other stuff that we're gonna have to, there's gonna be a couple other things we have to figure out, but. It should be closer. It's coming out. Something's holding it though. It is coming out, guys. Got the axles free. Something else is holding it. Let's see if I can see anything. I know those axles right there are gonna be in the way. I think we gotta get the car up higher.
Oh man, can we get this beast out of here or what? No. Ooh boy. Watch out. Jacks are a little squirrely. something and those axles are going to be in the way unless we drop this thing i think we're gonna to have to drop the engine more yeah the engine's just sitting up too high let's see if that helps Sitting on the two dollies. Oh, you know what? These might go up. Yeah, they'll go up high enough. If the, if the engine's low enough, it'll go up high enough. Okay. All right, cool. Ah, man, is that it? Isn't it crazy how that thing comes out of there? Look at that. Exhaust. Headers, transmission, engine. It's all right there. Okay, let's keep trying. Okay. I see something. All right, there were a couple cables still. This power cable that goes to the starter is connected to the starter. So I'm going to undo this bolt, see if it'll come off. It's pretty rusty. And then there was a cable connected to this thing which is some kind of, oh, look at that thing just popped right off. Uh, this is some kind of fuel injection vacuum pump thing that was connected to this. And there was a vacuum hose connected to it. And then this cable here, I think that might be the uh, temperature sensor for the oil. It went right here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the oil temperature sensor. So we just gotta get this battery cable off. All right, I went ahead and just snipped the uh, cable. This connector is gonna have to be replaced anyway. It's all broken and, and the cable in there there is corroded. We still got plenty of cable here and it looks good. It's not green, so we can just peel this back a little bit and put a new connector on there and have a nice, nice connection. All right, guys, this might be it. I don't know. It could be some other stuff, but let's see. Let's get this off. Okay. I think this is it. Let's hit something else. There it is. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh my God. Wow. Whew. All right, it is free. It's been in there at least since 1994, maybe longer. I don't know if it's ever been out. It could have just had a couple tune-ups. They may not have ever taken it out. It's kind of crazy to think. How do you even get to the belt, you know, to change it? I figured there'd be some of these in here. Look at that. Uh, it was running, but it was making some squeaking noises, probably coming from the fan. It's all rusty. The belt is, doesn't look too bad, actually. Maybe they did replace it somehow. Ah, uh, the squeaking could have been coming from the alternator as well. Um, but yeah, there it is. It's pretty wild how they get that whole thing in there, isn't it? Oh man, it's so cool to have it out of here. It is free. It's gonna need a new exhaust. It's a little crispy. A little crispy. Looks like they put a stainless tip on it maybe, but the rest of it's all rusted. Has some weird chambers going on here. Pretty neat engineering. 1970, I think, is when they 
released this, so they're probably working on this in the 60s, designing it. You know, I could mess around with it. We could try to get it started. Uh, maybe we'll do that. But first, I need to get some of this junk off of here. And once I get the junk off, then maybe we'll, we'll play with it a little bit. But in order to start it outside of the car, you need to hook it up to this thing. And it's connected to the chassis, and then it's connected to a wiring harness that goes up front to the key and everything. So you'd have to, you'd almost have to set it right next to the car. And I don't even know if these would reach in there. You'd probably have to have some kind of extender to extend it out. All right, well, I got it sitting out here. Might as well blow as much of this junk off as we can. And kind of go from there pull it inside and maybe start taking it apart i mean we could break the pressure washer out and just pressure wash the hell out of it maybe i'll do that maybe i'll peel off the computer away i'm not worried if water gets in it we just drain the oil flush it out but maybe it's better just to spray it down like it is right now just spray the hell out of it well let's blow it off first Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when I was blowing through the fan, there was some uh, mouse nest material coming through here. So there's probably mouse nest all up inside the tins, underneath the tins, and in the duct where the heat flows, the heater box pulls heat from the exhaust. Basically, this is just a shell that goes on the outside of the exhaust pipe. The actual fumes go out through the tailpipe, but the heat that comes off the pipe is captured in this what they call a heater box and uh, sends the heat through here when you hit the lever to turn the heat on in the car or the defroster. There's definitely some mice nests down in there because when I was blowing through the fan area it was back flowing through the tins and coming out of there. So we're gonna have to get all that stuff off and get it cleaned out properly. Most likely the engine's gonna need to be rebuilt just based off of the one that we rebuilt that I pulled out of my 1972. Most likely the cam is worn out, bearings are worn out, the lifters, the seals and all that stuff are just worn out, I'm sure. Dry rotted. Even though it does run, doesn't run well, part of that is the fuel injection system. The other part of it is the cam, the bearings, and all that stuff. So I think what I'm going to do right now is just keep digging into it. Let's pull the fuel injection system off. Try to get these tins off of here and see what we're working with. Because I know there's a nest and dirt and everything under there. Before we mess around with the engine anymore, I want to get these brake calipers off of here. And send them to my buddy at Rebuilt Calipers of America. So the first thing I'm going to do is break this nut loose right here. All right, this is a 30 mil. All 
right, you ready? Boom. Never lets me down. Never let me down. All right, there's a washer here, a spacer. Big spacer. Okay. Now, got my impact screwdriver to get these two flatheads off. These two flatheads hold the rotor onto the axle hub. hard to see but there's bolts there's four bolts that hold this caliper together and they're number 11s and I'm gonna slowly see if I can get them off All right, it should come off now. See that? See all the, there's a seal and a boot and these get seized in there because they're all rusted in there. And all the passages uh, get rusty and there's, you're supposed to clean the passages and uh, zinc plate them and all that. It makes them look really nice and also protects them. Look at this old pad. pretty wild there's still a lot of pad left so they had the pads changed probably and didn't put many miles on them okay so now that that's off we can pull the the rotor off it should pop off here we might have to tap it a little bit oh man there appears to be a lot of material left on these. I just don't know if, because of all the pitting, if they can be turned or not. Maybe I'll take a couple down to O'Reilly's or Discount Auto Parts or AutoZone or somebody and see if they can turn them. Let's pull this other pad out of here. Yeah, the pads are really thick. Not a lot of, they might've had to pads replaced they might have had the rotors and the pads replaced and then they just sat there for who knows who knows i wonder if you could clean these up and use them if they would still work so now we need to get this dust pan off because that'll just give us better access to this nut here hopefully because see this is all in the way and we get hopefully we get a better angle on it this this can come off anyway it's all this is all gonna have to come off all this whole this whole suspension thing the shock there's bearings in this thing that have to be replaced it's all gonna come out uh but not right now i'm just trying to get the calipers off but it's kind of a chain reaction of events that have to happen here to make it work so i think this is a 14 or maybe it's a 13 yeah it's a 13. so there is a washer in the nut or a bolt and there's three of these two of them are accessible with the drill one of them is not one you have to use a wrench a little tappy tappy <laughs> that we will leave off for now um so, we pretty much got everything out of our way here. A little better leverage on it. This one's loose, the top one's loose. So we're good on this one. 
but we gotta get that bottom one out. It's fighting me. These are the two bolts, and they're hard too. They're real hard steel. They did not want that sucker coming off. Let's get this clip off. Brake released. Okay, so if you want to get the axle out at this point, it's pretty should be pretty easy. Put the uh, nut back on it. I put it on almost to where it's just a little past the stud, so you don't nick the stud. it off a little bit so now I can just uh, take something else and tap it the rest of the way it's, it's basically loose you can see it flopping out now there it is whole axle we need the two little screws that hold the rotor on see this side is not rattling as much there is a bearing inside here, I think, like a big one, and a seal and all that stuff. So that's got to be opened up, pressed out, and replaced, and lubed up, and all that stuff. So we'll, we're going to evaluate all that and figure out how much it's all going to cost and uh, put a plan together. Where'd the screws go? Tricky little sucker. Oh, we feeling it tonight. Ah, oh, we feeling it tonight. There we go. Yeah, see, this one's got a little wiggle, but not nearly as bad as that other side. That other side is slap worn out, boy. Dang. Okay, cool. Whoo. I'm gonna clean up this mess and uh, take a break. <laughs> Maybe jack up the front and try to get the front calipers off. it'll come off a little easier than the, the rears all right let's get this off of here hopefully hey that came right off nice
All right, I pulled that hard line back over here and just kind of got it out of the way. So we're not bumping into it. Pull it out of the way over here. This is gonna need to be replaced. Might be able to save the hard line. Depends on if it comes off of here good. We'll get these two bolts off that are holding the caliper on. They're 19 millimeter. And it's a little tricky to get to them. The dust plate is in the way. The rotor's in the way. But I'm gonna try to do it without taking that stuff off, hopefully. Good pads. That's it for this side. That was fun, let's do it again. All right, that was smooth. That went real smooth. Happy, very happy with that. All right, we got the calipers off and I wanna get the fuel tank out cause it stinks. And I know there's a bunch of nasty wasp nests, mud daubers, and maybe even some mice. I've never taken one of these out of a 914, but just at first glance, it looks like this bracket right here is holding it in. I don't really see anything else holding it. So if this isn't it, then I'll, I'll do a quick Google search or I'll look in the manual, but this is probably it. I know it's hard to believe guys, but I've been working on the Gia for about uh, six months now. Part time, you know, not every day, just part time, but I'm starting to ramp up the hours that I'm putting in. And that's my goal this year is to, is to, is to work on the cars full time. So you're gonna see a lot more progress over the next few weeks. This little gasket here, just bust it up. So this is, I'm not sure, this is the gas tank. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's just some kind of a breather ventilation thing. It looks like this is a, a ventilation hose or a vacuum hose of some sort. I'm not really sure. A little bit of insulation here under the strap, vibration insulation. The strap is off. Will the tank come out now? I don't know. There could be some other stuff holding it. There's another uh, vent hose over here. Uh, smells like a dead animal in here, guys. Uh, there's a big vent hose here that's dry rotted. You just hear it crack. It's an overflow hose, actually, it looks like. So the overflow hose I just pulled off. There's a vent hose here. Okay, I did a quick look in the manual. It talks about the gas tank, but it doesn't tell you how to take it out. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's just this bracket here holding it, but there are fuel lines underneath it and there's a master cylinder and there's a bunch of other stuff fuel pump and all that stuff's probably in there all right i just noticed this cover here it only had one little screw holding it I just put i just pulled this one screw out the other three were missing and i peeked back there you can kind of see the fuel pump hiding in there but it, for some reason it's connected here too i don't know if this is factory or if they added this later. It's a weird little access point. Let's just pry on that tank a little more. She's coming. She's coming, guys. Been in there a long time. Oh man. 
Look at that. It's nasty. tank is heavy and uh, I cut the lines and nothing's really coming out so it's probably all clogged up at the bottom okay 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 I need something under here I left the blocks on that side shoot <laughs> all right hold on stay right there all right I think it's gonna come out hopefully something's holding it the uh, electrical lines going to the fuel gauge fuel sender um, it's holding it in so this thing has to come off, whatever the heck this top thing is called. There's another tin nut here, and there's one on the other side. So this one was covered with mud, you couldn't even see it. There's some more nuts in here that have to come out. You can barely see them covered up with dirt. I'm gonna vacuum that out and see if we can get them out. So we've got little eight millimeters in here. We need to get out. Bunch of them. Now will it come out? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it will. That's a big old hole to get into. That's nice as far as cleaning it goes. Look at this. Everywhere you go on this car, everywhere. It is just crazy. All right, is this just a cap? Does it pop off? Yes. Okay, cool. It's clean in there. I'm assuming this is original. Uh, all right, now. Can we get the tank out now? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Got some nasty old fuel in it, boy. Woo! Nasty. Nasty. We're gonna dump it into a bucket. Recycle it. Coming to a 7-Eleven near you. Or probably a Circle K. <laughs> oh, man. All right, you guys ready for some Tennessee moonshine? Oh. That doesn't look too bad. It's got a nice golden hue to it, almost amber. That's some southern sweet tea right there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool if the tank's not rusty. That'd be awesome, but I don't know. There's probably something in there. It's nice that they have that big hole, though. Uh, there is a little bit of rust down here. I don't know. Oh, that might just be a gasket. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got some rust coming out of there. What treasures lie within? Let's see. Flaking. Oh, it's a little crispy in there. Oh, there's some weird contraption in there. I don't know what that is. That's the fuel cinder. It's going down. It's pretty long. Cylinder next to it right here. But it definitely looks a little cruddy in there. Can you guys see back in there? I can't. I can't see that far. Let's pull the fuel cinder out. That might shed a little more light inside. Ooh, oh my God. Oh. Man, that is some, that's got some thick uh, tarnish. It's got a funky little smell to it. It's gonna need a little cleaning. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's gonna need a deep cleaning. Real deep cleaning. That's pretty, uh, pretty gnarly, guys. That's why the fuel wasn't coming out. It's swollen. It's completely clogged up. All right, well, that was quite the challenge getting the gas tank out, crawling under there, pulling that plate. We still gotta get the master cylinder out of there and the fuel pump. But man, these things, they were seized on there. Hopefully I can clean these up and we can reuse them. If not, hopefully somebody makes them. But I think, I think we can clean them up. This got gnarled up a little bit, but I think we can clean that up. That might be a little insert right there. I don't know what that is. I thought this was rust, but I think it's just, look at that little, Whatever that is. Gasoline lizard. I think this was just the back side of a, a gasket. We'll have to clean that up and see how bad it is. There might be uh, there might be a hole in here. I don't know if they make new tanks. I'll have to check. It might be better just to get a new tank. Because it's pretty nasty. Nice golden glow to it. Ooh, she's a little funky. So that's the fuel that came out of the tank. Still a pretty decent amount of fuel in there considering how long, you know, I don't know if they added fuel to it 20 years ago when he bought it or if that's the fuel that's been sitting in it since 1984, I don't know, or 94. There's definitely some rust. There's rust and junk in there, so. The tank is gnarly on the inside, pretty gnarly. I don't know if it's gonna be able, to, if we're gonna be able to save it or not, but I'm gonna try. All right, guys, I thought I messed this thing up because I was looking at him like, what the heck is that? And I thought I boogered up the threads, but that's actually just the top of a filter. There's a little filter that's in here. And it's completely just gone, disintegrated, barely holding on. Um, yeah, I'm trying to dig it out here, but it's it's kind of just falling apart. I think it's made out of brass or copper, but it is gnarly. So that's the top of it. There it goes. All right, it's coming. Let's see if it'll come out. There it is. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. It's completely, it's like all gnarled up. Like nothing's getting through there hardly, you know? All right, I haven't even looked in here yet. Let's take a look together. Something smells dead in here. <laughs> you know, not like old dead, like died in the last 
few months dead, maybe. Mm. Not sure where it's coming from. Here's a fuel pump. So the fuel pump and the fuel filter is hidden under the gas tank, which is uh, kind of a pain. I don't know if there's a better place to put the pump and the filter. So this is the brake fluid reservoir. It goes down to the master cylinder, which is underneath. It looks like this is a ground for the fuel pump. You guys see that right here? Little ground tab there. There's a power cable here. It was disconnected from the pump. Okay. There we go. Fuel pump, fuel filter, old hoses. The pump might still work. We'll have to check it. You guys can go anytime you want. Uh, you don't have to hang out, but if you want to, that's fine. I'm going to go and side this dirty little hole here and clean all this stuff out of here so it has a chance to air out and dry out. I'm going to put some gloves on and a dust mask, get the vacuum, air hose, all that stuff, and just try to get as much out of here as I can. Going in. Try to get as much as I can out while it's dry. Uh, before you start spraying water and just turns it to mud. You can get the dry stuff out first. Yeah, like this. You don't want that getting all wet in here and then it just turns into a mud puddle. I'm not gonna spray up in here too much. I'm just gonna spray down in here a little bit. Spraying some of the loose dust out that was flying all around. I'm not worried about any of these wires. Um, we've had real cool, dry, sunny, like full sun out here. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone for sticking by my side and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. And we're gonna keep going with the Gia. We're gonna keep going with the Dragon. We're gonna keep going with Rusty and the 914. And I think that's enough. And we'll try to spread out those projects, you know, a little bit here and there. You know, I might spend a week on one, a week on another, and uh, keep going with it like that. I think that'd be cool. Check it out. You guys ready for some Tennessee moonshine? Oh, <laughs>